uh, Frank uh, Hebert, regional from RPA, Herbert, and uh, Thomas Lonehout, um, and Sylvia Bonewald. Thank you. Go ahead, whoever would like to begin. I got the mic. All right, I got the mic. Tom, okay. go ahead. Right. First, I'd like to thank you for having this wonderful hearing. I, I'm going out a much more uh, educated person about the issue. Uh, I'm Tom Lowenhaupt, founder of Connecting.NYC, Inc., a New York State, <coughs> pardon me, a New York State not-for-profit created to educate New Yorkers about the Internet. The central organizing force behind our work is the .NYC top-level domain. Think of .NYC as being like .com, .org, or .gov, but just for New York City. Connecting NYC traces its roots to an Internet Empowerment Resolution passed by Queens Community Board 3 on April 19, 2001. I was then a member of the Community Board, and back then we advanced the concept of open data through the use of a Creative Commons license for our Community Board's website. And our Internet Empowerment re Resolution envisioned, envisioned using the .NYC top-level domain as the organizing force for New York City's digital resources. My goal today is to alert the Council to the advantages of using the dot NYC, uh, using dot NYC as part of the Open 311 and Intro 9, 11, 991 initiatives. Basically stated, dot NYC provides an un unlimited number, <coughs> pardon me, provides an unlimited number of names that might be used to identify digital resources. This includes data acquired as part of the city's 311 operation, as well as all other city databases. The naming of databases is just one example of the naming power of the .NYC TLD. It extends to assigning digital names to objects that normally see are that are not to objects not normally seen as part of the digital world. For example, by naming every piece of street furniture, every bench, light post, fire hydrant, tree, etc., the .NYC naming system becomes a, po a programmer's dream, leading to a more accessible and friendly city for both residents and visitors. It's part of a transition to what's called the Internet of Things. And beyond the local, the Geneva-based core is advancing a common naming standard amongst global cities that would allow for closer cooperation and coordination between the world's great cities. While the ICANN continues to ponder the process for activating in the public's interest as infrastructure human-readable names to its digital resources. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next. Hi. Um, first of all, thank you so much for um, allowing me to attend. I'm actually, my name is Salona Bonvald, and I'm with the League of Technical Voters, and I'm actually from Austin, Texas. And I'm also here for the PDF conference as well. So um, one of the things that I was asked to talk about is one of our projects is something called SiteAbility, CITAbility.org. And basically what we're asking is that all publicly available government documents be on the web and citable to a paragraph level. Um, we have a pretty simple solution that's outlined on um, our website, which is basically the domain name pass, plus the path plus, plus the document name creates a unique identifier. You then date, time, stamp it, and allow people to walk through it on a paragraph basis. Um, one of the interesting things that happens with that is earlier I heard people talking about you know, figuring out the ontology of terms so that people can find things, or figuring out, you know, how to make all of those um, 6,000 different FAQs for 311 available to the public. If you were to go and give all of those this unique identifier that's easily readable, um, then people can go and use that link on their blog post, on other commentary, and all of it would be searchable on the internet. And you would have search engines like Google and Bing and all of those actually figuring out those ontologies for you. And you wouldn't have to worry about any of this other technology just by using a very simple standard at the very beginning with the URL. So I would highly suggest um, looking at citability.org, um, going to the wiki and seeing the different papers. I've been talking with the New York Senate about this, recovery.gov, and actually the French government. Um, <laughs> they're all interested in doing this um, piece. So, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, my name is Frank Hebert. I'm a manager of Geographical Information Systems at Regional Planning Association, um, non-profit research planning organization, so from the Greater New York region. Um, as a research organization, we strongly welcome um, the proposals in the introduction. Um, information created and released by city agencies 
is vital to planning and advocacy work. Uh, for non-profits and other community organisations, availability of data is often a limiting factor on, on what you can do. And the, the central data portal in the introduction um, would make it easier to obtain information and to respond more accurately, speedily and efficiently on uh, issues affecting the city. I'm going to skip over the, um, the benefits of open government and innovation in the testimony because I think other people have covered them very well. Um, a couple of uh, sort of suggestions and comments that we have. Uh, we think the introduction could go further on geographic data. Uh, it doesn't make specific provisions for greater sharing of currently unavailable geographic data. The definition of uh, record in Article 23301 includes prepared maps. Um, but we suggest that the, the data could be more specific in opening up existing map services um, created and maintained by the city, giving unrestricted free access to all map data in common digital map formats could be transformative. Uh, we also think you could be uh, maybe more specific on, on data formats. So the, the definition of, of raw and unprocessed could perhaps be strengthened. I know, it's, again, it's been discussed a lot already today. Uh, but it's, it's that data um, being machine readable and, and completely disaggregated that, that's absolutely essential for future flexibility and, and innovation and use that could be over the horizon and we can't necessarily predict today. Uh, and we welcome consensus standards for open formats, um, and we urge that the formats used be non-proprietary. Um, we, we think that the, the DC office of the Chief Technology Officer has a very good um, lead uh, sort of case study, I think, that, that you could look at um, as a sort of baseline of minimum requirements for, for any system design in terms particularly of the, um, the variety and, and methods of data formats that, that they make available. Thank you. Thank you. How's Texas doing? Are they providing data? Um, <laughs> well, uh, let's. I'm very, very happy that y'all are doing what you're doing, and I hope that it serves as an example to my home state. <laughs> All right, that's, what, that's what I thought. I just wanted to ask. Um, in terms of RPA, because you certainly have a great reputation and we all know that this data would be helpful um, to you because you take it and you do great things with it. Um, somebody who's known RPA for a long time. But tell me just a little bit about what DCA provides as opposed to what New York does not now. I mean, I'm most familiar with the City Planning Commission, which I find challenging uh, here right. in New York. And second, I am a dying to get the environmental impact statements up online. That I don't know if everybody knows what they are, but if you see one, I have to deal with developers all the time, sometimes it's thick. And the data sits on somebody's shelf for God knows how long, and I don't even know what happens to them. I guess they're somewhere in city planning, and apparently one library per borough, if you're lucky, gets one, et cetera. So this would be a wealth of material. So I'm just wondering, those two as an example, um, is that something that DC provides? How is it a challenge here versus DC, et cetera? And I think the, the, um, the reason for bringing up the DC example was just the, the structuring of the data portal, some of the ways they make information like um, building permits and works permits available in a variety of both as a feed and also um, as, a, as a map file is, is impressive. I don't think that it's, the, it's a complete example necessarily for some of the things you're referring to. And definitely not a complete example for um, map data. So there's a lot of, of potential with land use data that the city currently only makes available in licensed forms. That Correct. Here, be, I know could, that. Yeah, it could be open here. Okay. Yeah. And how about, how do you get, I mean, I assume you use EIS data or even DEIS data. Is that something that you can get online now or is it only when you uh, go to the developer or to the city or library and so on. Yeah, we, we can obtain specific data for projects, but it tends to be licensed for the, the use on that project. Okay. And so that, that limits us in further okay. research. But and having uses. EISs online would be really helpful. Would you Correct. agree? Correct. Okay. Thank you all very much. That's really helpful.